Jamie returns from dawn with Marcella's corpse. He then comforts Cersei in her quarters and the conversation shifts to the death of their mother. Cersei then tells Jamie about the prophecy that Maggie told her as a child concerning the deaths of her children. Jamie brushes this off, insisting that they are the only two who have ever mattered and promising they will take back everything that has been stolen from them. Aware that Doran Martell had nothing to do with Marcella's murder, Jamie sends Doran a letter demanding the heads of Alaria and the three sand snakes responsible, which leads to the deaths of Doran and Tristane at Alaria's hands. Jamie and Tommen later mourn Marcella in the Sept of Baelor. Jamie informs Tommen they haven't found Tristane's killers, though Tommen suspects Cersei was involved. When Jamie asks why he has not allowed his mother to pay respects, Tommen informs Jamie that the High Sparrow has forbidden Cersei from entering the Sept. Jamie reassures Tommen that he will not let the sparrows imprison her again while he is in the city and asks Tommen why has he not visited his mother yet. As Tommen questions his ability to rule and protect his family, the High Sparrow arrives and Jamie orders Tommen to go see his mother. Jamie is furious at what the High Sparrow has done to Cersei and considers killing him on the spot but backs down when the fanatics surround him. The High Sparrow then revels in the idea that he has managed to take control of King's Landing effectively ruling the Seven Kingdoms, angering Jaime further. Jaime and Cersei later visit Kyburn's lab accompanied by Gregor Clegane. As Cersei asks Kyburn to sway more of Varys' spies to her cause, Jaime wonders aloud on the ex-maester's treatment of Clegane, causing the mountain to glare at him in anger. After meeting Kyburn, Jaime, Cersei and Gregor interrupt a small council meeting to demand a discussion on what to do about the Sparrows and Ilaria Sands' coup in Dawn. Kevin and Olena remind Cersei of her place, but Jaime, being Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, asserts he can stay. Instead, Kevin and the Council refuse to continue to meet while Gregor Clegane is present and promptly leave the Council Chamber. Later, after Cersei learns from Tommen that the High Sparrow means to have Marjorie perform a Walk of Atonement, she and Jaime try to appeal to the Council again. This time, they agree to work together to remove the High Sparrow from power. Jamie convinces his uncle to keep the Lannister forces in reserve but have the Tyrell army go to the Great Sept of Baelor and free Marjorie and Loras, though Kevin warns that the High Sparrow has many supporters and thousands could die in the ensuing civil war. Jamie meets Mace Tyrell and his army by the city gate and rides with the Lord of Highgarden to the Great Sept. As the High Sparrow is addressing the crowd, the Tyrell force marches into the square at the foot of the Sept stairs. Just as it seems it will come to blood, the High Sparrow announces he will be releasing Marjorie due to a new alliance between the Crown and the Faith, and Tommen emerges from the Sept with the rest of the Kingsguard. Jaime is shocked and enraged, and he gives the High Sparrow a scornful glare. After the failed attempt at the Great Sept, Tommen removes Jaime from the Kingsguard. He commands him to take an army to Riverrun, which was recently captured by the Blackfish and the Tully army, and help the Freys retake the castle. Jaime later informs Cersei of this angry that the High Sparrow has swayed Tommen to his side and threatening to attack the Sept with help from Bronn and other sellswords. Instead, Cersei advises Jaime to lead the Lannister forces to Riverrun, confident the Mountain will win her trial by combat. She kisses Jaime goodbye, reminding him their enemies have always underestimated them. Jaime arrives at Riverrun accompanied by Bronn and an army of 8,000 Lannisters. He witnesses Lothar Frey and Black Walder Rivers threatening to kill Edmure Tully if the Blackfish doesn't surrender. Knowing his nephew is too valuable to lose, the Blackfish dismisses them and Edmure is spared. Jaime remarks on the Frey's poor attempts at siege warfare and points out that threatening to hang Edmure and then not doing so makes them look weak. To prove his point, he threatens to strike Black Walder if he speaks again. When Black Walder begins to answer, Jaime slaps him hard with his armored hand, drawing blood. Jaime assumes command of the siege and orders Edmure to be washed and fed. Jaime then sends word to Brynden that he wishes to parley. He comes face to face with Brynden, but it quickly becomes clear that the Blackfish is not interested in surrendering. He asks Jaime whether he has come to honor his vow to his niece and return her two daughters. Brynden quips that, negotiating with an oathbreaker is like building on quicksand, declaring that he is ready to die in his home. He challenges Jamie to either storm the castle or try to starve them out, claiming that they have two years' worth of provisions. Brynden then asks Jamie, Do you have two years? A few days into the siege, Brienne arrives at Riverrun to seek an alliance with House Tully to fight the Boltons. 
As she and Jamie discuss the situation privately in a tent, Bron asks Pod if he thinks they are having sex and says that Jamie would definitely have sex with her. Meanwhile, Brienne tells Jamie that she fulfilled their oath to Catelyn Stark and explains Sansa's desire for aid from the Blackfish. She proposes that if she can convince the Blackfish to surrender the castle, then Jamie will allow him and the Tully army safe passage to the north. Jamie agrees and allows Brienne to enter River Run and try to convince Brynden to surrender. She then removes Oathkeeper and tries to return it to Jamie, since the purpose he lent it to her for rescuing Sansa has been fulfilled, but he refuses to take it back, saying that it's hers now. Brienne reminds him that her oath to Sansa will obligate her to fight him if her efforts to find a peaceful solution should fail if he attacks the castle. Jamie responds by saying that he hopes that it does not come to that. After Brienne fails to persuade the Blackfish, Jamie visits Edmure to offer him a deal, trying to tempt him with seeing his son and sending him, his son and his wife, Roslyn Frey to Casterly Rock, offering them comfortable rooms. Jamie promises that Edmure's son will be taken care of, that he will be given knights to train, and a keep of his own desire when he comes of age. Edmure ridicules Jamie. Jamie, Realizing he cannot peacefully try to persuade Edmure into surrendering the castle, responds by warning him that people can do anything for love, threatening that he will kill every Tully in order to be able to return to King's Landing and be with Cersei again. With his family's life credibly threatened, Edmure agrees to cooperate. Despite Brynden's protests, the gates are open to Edmure and Jaime takes the castle without bloodshed. On the castle walls, Jaime is informed of the Blackfish's death, leaving him visibly saddened. He then witnesses Brienne and Podrick escaping in a boat, but allows them to leave, waving goodbye to Brienne. Jamie then marches to the twins with the phrase as they celebrate their retaking of Riverrun. Jamie notices a serving girl who smiles at him. Bronn then complains that all the women desire Jamie, who then calls over two young girls and introduces them to the knight. He then speaks to Walder Frey, who gloats about their victory. When Walder attempts to equate himself with Jamie, calling them both Kingslayers, Jaime is visibly irritated. Walder goes on to say that fear is a marvelous thing but Jaime retorts that people fear the Lannisters, not the Freys, and questions the need for the Freys if the Lannisters have to keep helping the Freys hold the Riverlands. Walder does not respond and Jaime brusquely leaves. Walder and his sons, Black Walder and Lothar, are later murdered by the same serving girl that smiled at Jaime earlier, who reveals herself to be Arya Stark. Upon returning to King's Landing, Jamie, Bronn, and the Lannister forces are shocked to see the Great Sept in ruins. That evening, Jamie arrives at the throne room of the Red Keep in time to witness Cersei's coronation, but is visibly displeased that Tommen, their last child, is dead and his sister lover has committed the very atrocity that Jamie prevented at such great personal cost when he killed the Mad King.